Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a minute with all this coronavirus stuff. Our schedules got very crazy for a little while, as well as my husband now works from home full time, so it was very difficult for me to find a moment to myself to do these videos. So I'm not sure how often I'll be able to make content for you guys, but hopefully I'll, I'll finally figure out a better schedule. So this is going to be my year in review for first grade. We actually go year round pretty much. I just give my daughter weeks off here and there, but we're, we're always in school at our house, but I know it's kind of the end of the year for most people at this point. So I wanted to kind of give you a review of what I thought about some of the materials we used this year. And I'm going to go over everything in one video so that I really don't have the opportunity to break them down like I did at the beginning of the year. So I'm actually going to start with our main curriculum or what I thought was going to be our main curriculum when we started this school year and that is moving beyond the page now I love moving beyond the page my daughter also loves moving beyond the page if you're not familiar with beyond, moving beyond the page I've done a couple of videos on them so definitely check those out I'll try to link them below as well but moving beyond the page is a workbook based secular homeschooling program and it's also very literature heavy but not as heavy as I would say as um, Torchlight or Build Your Own Library, but it still has a lot of literature included in the curriculum. Now, what wound up happening with us is we had a lot of things we wanted to do this year. There's a lot of things my daughter was is really interested in and studying, and so we just could not do the schedule that Moving Beyond the Page has. So what I have decided is We've only pretty much done this workbook. As you can see, it's a very thick workbook, but this is the only one we've done. We haven't even touched the other workbooks that are, were supposed to be done in this time period. So we're gonna do them for second grade, and that's fine because this particular level is six to eight. So my daughter fits in perfectly with that. I will say at the beginning of the year, a lot of this was actually a little bit um, more difficult for her, but now that she is, is older, this, a lot of it's a lot easier for her. She really understands it really well and kind of flies through it a lot faster. Why my daughter loves this, because I have asked her personally, she loves it because I just give her the assignment, we pull this workbook out, and all the information is here for her. And um, when I'm explaining things, the instructions in the parent's guide are just so well done and well thought out and very well explained easy for me to read and make sure she understands and it gives you helpful hints if there's something that maybe you need a little help on I mean it's really 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 easy to to do and that's why my daughter loves it that's why I love it my daughter just loves work books because she feels accomplished when she's done like once she's still finish one of her worksheets she feels very accomplished versus when we're just reading a story and talking about it she doesn't feel it doesn't have that sense of accomplishment so I highly recommend moving beyond the page it is a little expensive I will not lie to get everything all the workbooks and to get all the reading material and all the supplies it is it does get expensive you can find some Facebook pages online to get some of the workbooks if someone decided that this program didn't work for them there's also you know checking books out from your library and you know different ways to make it a little cheaper but it is a little pricier than say you know then then moving beyond the page which is you know just for the program is $30 but once you add all those books it gets pricey as well but I still highly recommend it this is still my daughter's favorite curriculum she gets she loves doing it she gets super excited she learns a lot I really feel like this is a great program that fills in any gaps you may have if you're doing reading and math and a lot of other things on your own this really fills in a lot of the gaps and because of covid we had to no we couldn't do our co-op classes anymore and her science class was her co-op class she had it every week and this has come in handy because there's a there is science in here it's not as much as i would like but there is science in here another program that we also got through moving beyond the page is the abc darian um, reading program and again we absolutely love it I've reviewed the level A before and we we are in book two we have not finished it because I do allow my daughter this is the only lesson that I allow my daughter to really really take her time on now the reason we haven't done much of moving beyond the page is because we have a lot of other things we do but 
this we do every day, but I do allow her to take her time because I feel like reading is important and I really want her to understand the sounds. So we literally just started book two a couple weeks ago. So you'll see there's not much that's been done in this. Um, and we love this. Again, my daughter is flying through reading. She can actually, she reads so well. And the only thing we've really used is this workbook and some little readers. That is my only downside with ABC Darien. This is the only reader for level two, or B, level B, I should say. And it's Aesop's Fables, which is great, but that's it. And it's not even, they're not daily reads. So um, we do supplement from books from the library and that works fine for us. But this is a really inexpensive, great reading phonics program. I highly, highly, highly recommend it been wonderful for us. Another thing I've started doing for her, and this is going to be quite messy, is I've started making her have spelling words every week. And this is just something we do on our own. If you watched my video where I did the opening of Moving Beyond the Page, you will see there was a poster. That poster has a hundred um, 100 sight words on it. And so we use those sight words now because she can read them all. And we use those sight words now for spelling. And every week she has words that she has to write, write, and write until, until she gets a good, good grasp on them. The other program we use this year is Math Mammoth. And wow, Math Mammoth is really, really, really great program. We did Singapore Math last year. We did Math Mammoth this year. Just gonna let you see the book. You don't have multiple books for this. You can get the test book that come, that you can purchase separately. and But other than that, you don't have a separate teacher's manual. And the reason is because all the information's in here. The concept of Math Mammoth is that the child is almost a little bit self-taught. They read the instructions and they figure out, they can read the instructions on their own. All the information is there for them to see. So we have really enjoyed it. We have finished the first book. We are still working on the second book. We did have a big family trip in the middle of school year, so that's why we're just a little behind on a few things. But we are catching up. And plus this COVID thing definitely threw us for a loop. But Math Mammoth is a great math program. My daughter, there are a few things I wish they went a little bit more in depth on, like word problems. That was something I wasn't too happy or too satisfied with of how they explained it. They kind of explained it one time and then moved on. <laughs> and my daughter did need a little bit more instructions. And the problem that I found with the, um, the word problems is they don't give the steps to figure them out. Like if you're given a word problem, what questions should you be asking to kind of figure out what the answer is? And that's just not really gone over very well here. Now, I've already done a separate review for Curiosity Chronicles, but a lot of questions have come up, and I really did do that review in a hurry because people were asking for it, and I didn't have a lot of time. So I just kind of like threw it together really quickly, and there were some things maybe I didn't cover very well on my review. Now, what has happened in the last few weeks, we haven't had time to do Curiosity Chronicles, so we haven't done as much as I would like. But my original plan was for this to take two years to go through, and that's still, we're still pretty much on track with that. So a few things that I mentioned before that I wasn't particularly happy with, I'll just go ahead and start with those, is I do wish that they had covered prehistory a little bit more. Um, prehistory is kind of talked about, but it's glazed over pretty quickly. And there's just so much of prehistory out there. And I wish, I wish it would just gone a little bit, maybe a couple more chapters of prehistory. And when I mean by prehistory, yes, I am, including you know, the caveman time period. But I wish that there would have been just a small chapter, maybe on um, dinosaurs, um, you know, the period before humans and humanoid creatures arrived. If that would have been a really nice little addition to the beginning, but I get it. That's not what this is, this is ancient history. But I would have liked that. There are a few pronunciation issues that I've noticed in the book, but nothing that can't be fixed. But overall, I, my daughter really loves it. She loves having a class that she gets to listen to and follow along reading without mommy reading it to her. So that's been really great. And the, the activities are pretty good. I will say some of it's kind of busy work. 
So definitely pick and choose which activities you you do. We don't do all the activities. I just found it was very busy. Now, one question I did get was the quality of the of the pa of the paper of the workbook. I, I don't know if you can see that, but you can. Let me get to one of these pages that we haven't done yet. So you can kind of see a little bit better. Do you see? There's a lot of fun stuff to do in here. All right. You see, you can see through that pretty easily to the other side. So that was one question I did get that I didn't get a chance to go over. But this right here is your pretty standard library book quality. The page is pretty thick. You can see through it kind of if you hold it up to the light. But it's really not that bad if you're not holding it up to a light. You can't see through it at all. Okay. Again, I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people... Um, don't like the voices, don't like Ted, but we really enjoyed it. My daughter thinks they're funny and has really been happy with it. I really like that no religion has been really brought into this. We are trying to stay secular and I was really happy with that. Okay, and um, another thing which I did not cover before, my daughter is actually learning two languages this year as well, which is again why we just could not fit in all of moving beyond the page. She's learning Indonesian because that is part of her heritage and also Mandarin because that's also a part of her heritage so she is currently learning Indonesian and Mandarin as well as English so she has a lot of language lessons and so this is just one of the things that we're using Indonesia Indonesian language is uses the same alphabet as American or English <coughs> language American as English language and so that makes it a lot easier to learn than Mandarin so that may be something that if you're interested in your child learning maybe a language that isn't as popular as other languages, I highly recommend Indonesian. The pronunciation isn't that different from ours and there's even like that's apple. Instead of apple, it's apple. So I highly recommend this as an alternative language if, if you want to have your child learn a language that people don't always think about. We, this is our this is all the art we do. I'm terrible at art. It's just not one of my strong points. And unfortunately, we haven't been able to do um, a lot of co-op art classes with things that are going on. But again, I mentioned this before. This, this has been really, really easy to follow along with. Um, if you're not very good at drawing, which I am not, this helps me still be able to teach my both my kids. My four-year-old also takes the art class with us. This one is, I kind of, I've left my daughter's work for this on the, on these just so people could see what I mean by she just traces them and uses eraser. Um, these are erasable little plastic pouches you can put the handwriting lesson in. I just wanted people to be able to see what I mean by that. But we, we have been doing this. This is the Getty Dubay Italic Handwriting Series. We did um, we did something completely different for kindergarten, and, and there was nothing wrong with the program we used before. It was just so perfect. You had to have perfect printing, and it it was causing my daughter stress. So we switched it up and went to the Getty Dubay Italic writing, and she has really loved it. Her handwriting has improved even more. I've been very very happy with how much her handwriting has improved. There have been a few letters I will say that I'm not happy about how they have them written because I guess like T, T is one that my daughter kind of struggles with because it does have the little hook on it and I don't know there's been a couple of letters that have been slightly problematic but nothing a big deal overall again we're going to do cursive writing so we've been really really happy with this with all that said with all the different lessons that we have incorporated um, there is nothing that I plan to get rid of. I'm actually going to con continue on with Math Mammoth. I'm going to continue on with Curiosity Chronicles. The only one I will have to change up just because they only offer the, those um, A, A and B workbooks is the ABC Darian. We're probably going to start focusing on spelling now anyway because she reads exceptionally well already and we haven't even really worked on this book. But there's still some some sound combinations that she still isn't familiar with so we're still going to finish this book and then we're going to look for a spelling program so if you have any spelling programs that you highly recommend please let me know below I'd really appreciate that 
If you have any questions about any of these, please let me know. We're going to continue on doing Moving Beyond the Page. Again, we loved all of these. Nothing was a huge issue for us. Last year, I had to completely change our curriculum because we just were not happy with it. It was not working for us. The only thing I did not bring up here is I have added back in geography. We I had taken geography out, but now every day we do map work again, and that's something that my daughter absolutely loves, so I did have to add that back in eventually. Okay, guys, well, I hope that you found this helpful. I am sorry that this was a little rushed and maybe a little rambling, but these are my thoughts on all these different programs. If you have, and if if anyone has another uh, idea uh, for, and sorry about that, an easy um, art program for kids and for parents to teach, I would love to hear from it. So I'm still looking for an easy art program as well as an easy um, second grade language spelling program. All right, thanks guys. Hope y'all have a great day and are staying safe out there. Bye.